What's up guys, Derek, moreplatesmoredeeds.com. Today we're going to be talking about exactly how much muscle somebody can gain from anabolics. Because this is something I get asked all the time, Derek, if I take X, then how many pounds do I gain? Obviously, this isn't something you can just answer flat out. It's based on caloric intake training adherence you know a million other factors but this study in particular i felt like was a perfect way to exhibit in general what can be expected and it's one of the only studies that looks at super physiological doses of testosterone in healthy young men to see exactly how much of a difference a certain dose actually equates to. A lot of times people wanna know how much will 200 equate to, how much will 500 milligrams equate to. This study looked at weekly administrations of 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 125 milligrams, 300 milligrams, and 600 milligrams for 20 weeks. This is like a very, a very, very good um, example to show what can be expected from testosterone itself in a clinical setting. So relating this to real life application, it's pretty, I don't think there's a better example than for what can somebody gain? Cause this is completely controlled. Uh, nutritional intake is controlled. Exercise regimen is controlled. The dose is controlled. It's pharmaceutical grade stuff. So you can see exactly what happens. So um, without getting into the details of energy and protein intake and blah, blah, blah. It's like all the factors are the same. The only thing that differs is the dose. So it's a very good um, example of exactly what kind of changes can occur just from the dose, not from some guy who happens to, uh, you know, have a better adherence to his diet than another guy. So basically of the uh, participants, they're 18 to 35 years old, prior weightlifting experience and normal test levels. They've not used any anabolics before had not participated in competitive sports events in the preceding year and are not planning to compete in uh, any events in the following year. So what we saw was a dose dependent change in muscle mass and strength, which I'm like, obviously logically <laughs> we're going to assume occurs, but the exact amount in particular is interesting. If you actually look at the 25 and 50 milligram dose, Weight body composition did not improve in lean muscle mass at all, really. Like there's no notable increase. And in fact, at the 25 milligram dose, they actually lost muscle. And the reason for that is if you take a healthy young man who has like, let's just say a 700 nanogram per deciliter natural test level, he's going to negatively progress because he now is operating with an exogenous source that his body's relying on, but it's less than he was naturally producing. So the consequence of that is the 25 milligram group actually lost muscle mass. And then the uh, 50 milligram group didn't gain very much at all. The 125, 300 and 600 group are the ones who gained significant amounts of muscle. And the difference between them is pretty interesting. So in the 125 milligram group per week, there was 3.4 kilograms of fat-free mass increased. Now you have to understand fat-free mass also accounts for water. It's not just muscle tissue. So, and obviously as you would expect, the higher these testosterone doses get, there's more aromatization occurring and therefore more water retention. So that's going to play a role too. So we had the 125 milligram group gained uh, 3.4 kilograms. The 300 milligram group gained 5.2 kilograms and the 600 milligram group gained 7.9 kilograms. Obviously strength levels increased in parallel to this as well. Okay, they were positively correlated with testosterone concentrations and HDL levels were negatively correlated. So, you know, the higher your test level goes, the worse your lipids are going to be too. Your HDL suppression is going to be worse and worse, the higher the testosterone level is. So obviously these are expected logical conclusions to make even if you were just guessing and a lot of people would say oh what's the point of looking at that but it just goes to show how much you can really expect like for people doing this for performance enhancement purposes this isn't the point to uh you know i'm not trying to promote use in a performance enhancing context or anything like that but it's just a really interesting way to show in a clinical setting exactly what can be expected in a muscle building context from the master hormone testosterone that we all operate with and depend on for gaining muscle mass, at least endogenously, people who are natural and most people who use enhancement testosterone is the main thing. Honestly, the amount 125 milligrams increased is 
pretty substantial. Like the 7.9 kilogram, it's obviously double, but they had to increase the dose to get that doubling was like over four times the dosage of the 125 milligram group. So you had to take 600 divided by 125. You had to take 4.8 times as much testosterone equates to uh, extra 4.5 kilograms, which is, you know, obviously substantial, but I mean, the amount of side effects that occur at that higher dosage is, a, you know, the risk to reward, is it really worth it? It doesn't even account for the water weight. It's, uh, it's just fat-free mass. Anyways, the difference in muscle... Fat-free mass gain, interesting to say the least, and it's a study you should definitely take a look at if you are on TRT or you're just interested in the pharmacology and testosterone in general and how it impacts our functions and our performance on a day-to-day -day basis. The study name is uh, Testosterone Dose Response Relationships in Healthy Young Men. Highly recommend you check it out. I'll put it in the link in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Uh, follow me on Instagram at more please underscore more dates, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, etc. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.